Scott, and today we're talking all things IT sustainability and how prioritizing your company's sustainability goals can actually help you achieve your business goals. So I'm joined today by John Fry, HPE Senior Director and Chief Technologist of Sustainable Transformation. So welcome, John. We're really happy to have you here today. So let's dive right in. Can you tell me a little bit about what is IT efficiency and why is it important for businesses today? It's a great question, and part of what IT efficiency is, is how do we use the technology resources most efficiently with the least amount of energy, keep them for just an optimal amount of time so that we get the most performance out of them, but at the same time make sure we don't adversely impact something else like resiliency or redundancy. We need to help customers right-size their infrastructure and get all of those benefits without sacrificing or having unintended consequences. So then what are the challenges that they face? So we're encouraging them to actually think strategically and come at this topic of IT efficiency in a way that really lets them solve for it, maintain resiliency, redundancy, business operations, and those sorts of things, and drive out costs as much as possible. What are the key elements that should be included in any IT efficiency strategy? As we've learned over 25 years of doing this, there's five, what we call five levers of IT efficiency. And what we find is in every case, no matter where the customer hosts their workloads, no matter if we're talking public cloud all the way to edge on the other side, they're equally as applicable. And those are equipment efficiency, which is really about get the most amount of work out of each piece of equipment that you have in the infrastructure. And yet we know today industry statistics haven't improved much here that the average compute device has about 20 to 30 percent utilization in a virtualized environment, less than 10 hmm. if it's a single application. Storage is about 40 percent utilization on average. So we know that customers are running their infrastructures at very low utilization levels. Mm -hmm. And yet, by the way, those that those pieces of equipment are most energy efficient at much higher levels as well. So first is equipment efficiency. Let's right size the infrastructure. With the goal being 100%? It never, never 100 <laughs> because workloads fluctuate. Sure. So often customers will set 60 to 75% depending on the workloads That's we're talking goal. about. Okay. That's their goal, gives them some headroom, but it also allows them to almost double where they are today. Sure. The second one is energy efficiency, and that is if we're going to consume a kilowatt of energy, have it do the most amount of work possible. And this is both how do we use that equipment at higher utilization levels so it's most energy efficient, but it also gets into when do we do a tech refresh? So there's a great statistic that came out of an Uptime Institute survey. When they asked 600 data center operators around the world how old the equipment in their infrastructure was, what they found is about 40% of the compute that was reported was over five years old. So the customers think, I'm gonna run it till it fails. But that equipment, that 40% of the population, did 7% of the work, but consumed 66% of the power in the data center. Oh my goodness. So <laughs> very graphic example of why what will seem like a good, um, equipment lifecycle decision is actually a very bad one because the older equipment does so much less work for so much more power, it's not very energy efficient. So then the third one is resource efficiency. So not just looking at the equipment and how much energy it consumes, but what are the resources that it takes to keep that equipment running in terms of cooling, in terms of power conversion. The average data center has five different power conversions before the energy gets from the wall of the data center to actually powering the equipment. Well, every time you do that, there's loss in there. So can we make those fewer? Same way with cooling. The average data center has about twice the cooling that it actually needs. Why? Because we know that if something in there gets hot, it's gonna fail. But if we don't have great analytics, we don't know what's getting close to an over temperature situation. We don't want it to fail. That's how so overcool. Overcool. So we overcool. So resource efficiency is all about how do we do a better job of optimizing cooling, power conversion, and even the people that it takes to run the infrastructure. If your infrastructure is smaller and more efficient, it takes less employees to operate it as well. Sure. So those were the first three, and for many, many years. Those were the ones that people thought a lot about, and that's really what IT teams were trying to improve. Okay. 
But then we realized a couple of years ago, well, wait a minute, this hardware is all running applications. What about the efficiency of the application? So we added software efficiency. And what we found was both, how do we make the code itself more efficient, more efficient programming languages, uh, more concise code so that it took less hardware to run. And what we realized, looking at some academic studies, is perhaps 50% of the total utility challenge was application-based, not mm. hardware-based. And it's even, how do we help the customer make sure they need all of the applications in their infrastructure? Because sure. almost always, there are zombie applications out there running that have been abandoned, they but are still running. Years, they right? haven't yeah. used in years. We all have those, right? <laughs> so it's, it's that. And then how do we use software to optimize? There's a great optimization opportunity. AI and ML bring in some great opportunities for optimizing these operations as well. And finally, the other thing that we heard again and again from customers is we're constantly coming back to have to buy more storage. And so we said, well, wait a minute. Are you using all the data that you're collecting? And actually, it turns out industry averages, say, 30 to 40 percent of all the data a company collects. Do they do anything with? And so the question is, why are you gathering data that you're Don't making need. no use for? Sure. Um, in some cases, it's regulatory. Right. So it's it's setting a data strategy in place to say, what do we need to collect, mm -hmm. how frequently, how long do we need to keep it, and does it have to be instantly available, or can we put it on, for example, tape storage mm -hmm. and put it in a vault, so if a regulator came in and you needed to bring the data back, you have the capability to do it, but it's not taking IT resources on a daily basis to maintain that data. Sure. So what we find is across those five levers, if a customer has thought through all of them, Chances are they've optimized well and they've avoided the unintended consequences. Does any of that, any of these five levers, does that change when considering AI, I guess I should say? Absolutely, yes. Are, are they all applicable to AI? Yes, and some of them take on a much bigger um, impact of the lever, and that's what part of why we call them levers, is the impact may vary for each customer, but they all apply. So for example, in generative AI, where you're dealing with very large language models, well, one of the ways you drive efficiency is first shrink the size of the data set you're working with, so data efficiency. Mm -hmm. For example, if you're building a large language model in English, but you've used a publicly available internet scrape, mm -hmm. first take out anything that's not in English. Um, make your data set smaller. Second, take out any of the machine language, the HTML that causes websites to display the way they display because that's not needed for your generative AI model. So do data efficiency first, and then look at the efficiency of the application. Frankly, many generative AI models today were designed with the assumption that you have unlimited power and unlimited hardware on which to run this model. So these models are huge. They consume tremendous amounts of power. Hmm. But yet we know if we actually design the model instead, assuming a limited power or, uh, or limited hardware, you can design a much more efficient model that has the same quality of output mm -hmm. but runs on a much smaller infrastructure size. And so that's what customers are starting to see. You're starting to hear about small language models, mm -hmm. and that's actually what those are. Okay. So yeah, all five levers apply to AI as well. And in fact, it's opened new doors for us to have conversations with customers. So talk to me a little bit about how a, an organization or um, an, even an existing customer, if they want to get started on their IT efficiency journey, how do they get started? What does day one look like? Yeah. <laughs> so if they're just literally starting the journey, what we recommend is they leverage a free workbook we have called Six Steps for Implementing a Sustainable IT Strategy. Um, and then we talk about looking through the life cycle. So one is leverage those free resources, start through the workbook, but two is look at what you're already getting from HPE. So for example, if they're an HPE GreenLake customer, we can talk to them a lot about how when their GreenLake 
infrastructure was put in place, HPE focused on those levers ourselves that they can take full advantage of, and they didn't have to start from the beginning there. Or if they're a HPE financial services asset upcycling customer, the end of life piece was already considered, and that's included as part of that agreement. Uh, so it, it, if they're a HPE professional services or complete care customer, one of the things they have access to is a whole wealth of professional services that can come in and help them implement this work because one of the things we find a lot with customers is they say okay we have expertise maybe in compute or compute utilization but we're not very good at efficiency efficiency or figuring out what applications are in our infrastructure mm -hmm. do we need them even where are those applications running are they mm -hmm. in our public cloud instance are they on our data center so hpe's got a wealth of professional services that can come in and assist them as well so it start from where you are Think strategically, customers need to rely on those experts that have a lot of expertise, and HPE has a lot of bench strength all the way across all five of those levers. So we're a great partner, and if we're already their technology provider, it's a great easy segue to get us engaged to help them. Sure. Thank you, John. We really appreciate your time today. Appreciate it. And thank you for joining us today. Please look out for future sessions where we will meet with other IT sustainability function specialists and continue to deep dive into how companies can achieve their sustainability goals.